shape, regular shape, that recipe in any form must be destroyed to defeat the virus. And the interesting thing is, until 1998, nobody knew that cells had this defense mechanism. We had no idea it was there. That's what's so amazing, is this whole mechanism had been sitting there where cells were able to tell that something was very funny when they saw mirror image messages and start not just destroying the messages, but destroying anything that looked like that message. They'd worked out this whole defense system against, against viral RNA, and we then accidentally stumbled into using it. The accident was Rich Jorgensen's purple petunia. The question, remember, was when Rich tried to make his petunia more purple, why did it turn white? Well, the answer, it turns out, was that Rich, by accident, discovered the cop. When Rich invaded the petunia cell and inserted his make more purple instructions, he didn't know it, but his purple instructions happened to have that suspicious viral shape. So when the cop saw the recipe, the cop thought, virus, and destroyed every recipe for purple in the cell. So there's no possibility anymore of producing the purple pigment because the purple transcripts are gone. If there are no recipes for purple, the chefs don't cook purple. And because there's no purple pigment produced, the flowers will be white. And that's how Rich and his petunias help discover what we now call RNAi. RNAi means RNA interference because the cop is interfering with RNA messages, with the recipes in the cell. And when scientists realize that every plant and animal cell has RNAi, a way to turn off the recipes, turn off genes, they thought, hmm, maybe we can use these cops to work for us. Okay, Chubber. Which brings us to Marty Russell, 78 years old. She and her husband used to spend lots of time here at their daughter's nursery. Thank you, Rosie. Years ago, she enjoyed doing lots of things. Her passion was reading. Oh. Uh, she would read everything. Golf. Yeah. I love to play golf, bridge. But then Marty began losing her sight. Couldn't see, and I'd probably get the peppers in with the zucchinis, and there'll be big problems then. So she went to her doctor, who told her... You have macular degeneration. A degenerative disease caused by too many blood vessels growing in the eye, underneath the retina. As these blood vessels grow, they leak out fluid and blood in a center of her vision, and it's, it's as if you're looking through a very dirty windshield, essentially. I went home, I was just devastated. So Marty volunteered to be a candidate for RNAi therapy, something so new she's kind of a pioneer. She was probably one of the first to get it for any disease whatsoever, uh, and specifically for macular degeneration. Hey, how are you? How are you? Good to see you. This one, this is the VIP room. I feel very honored. The reason Marty has so many blood vessels growing in her eye, clouding her vision, is there's probably a mistake in her DNA, in a gene that produces too many recipes that say, make more blood vessels. So the chefs cook up proteins for more, and she ends up with too many blood vessels. Her doctor wants her to have fewer blood vessels, but how do you get the chefs to make fewer blood vessels? It's pretty easy. You want to shut down a gene? Put in a copy of the gene with its mirror image. Signals the cell, better shut this thing down. We inserted the needle after numbing her up. So the doctors put literally injected RNA recipes into Marty's eyes that said make more blood vessels. But they made those recipes look dangerous, like viral recipes, hoping the cop in Marty's cells would leap to it and destroy lots of recipes for more blood vessels, leaving Marty with fewer blood vessels. They wanted the cop to turn off Marty's disease. Did it work? Marty's vision has improved. It's a very promising result. I can play bridge now. <laughs> Which is very important. I'm not great, but, uh, <laughs> you know, it's part of my life. She can see flowers again. Oh, some of them are just gorgeous. So apparently they did trick the cop in Marty's cells to reduce vein production, although not completely. I see the yellow... Inside is just a little cloudy, but I can see it. There's a lot of questions still that need to be answered. This is not a treatment that is as proven. Can we deliver recipes to the right cells? Lovely. Does the treatment last? That's beautiful. All these are big questions. Still, 
In mice, RNAi has been effective with Huntington's disease, Lou Gehrig's disease, hepatitis, breast cancer. So says Greg, if we ever work this out in humans... Any sort of disease that you can imagine becomes fair game. All the diseases which would be helped if you shut off a gene. Cancer, HIV, for example. Wait, are you, is this because you're just an RNA buff that you're saying? You've just listed cancer and HIV. These are famous, big, fat diseases. Arthritis. Well, stop listing them and tell me, is this a prejudice <laughs> that you're telling me, or is this true? I mean, these are all candidates for this kind of therapy? Certainly they are. And finally, we have saved the best for last. The true power of RNAi goes even deeper than finding cures to terrible diseases. Because what RNAi does, remember, the cop's job is to turn off information, turn off genes. The big problem of understanding, say, the human genome is you have 20,000 genes. How in the world are you supposed to know what each one does? Well, one very good way to start would be to turn off gene number one and see what went wrong. So you could go through all the genes that make up a human, or for that matter, make up a petunia, and turn off each gene one at a time. If you trick the cop to turn off gene number one, no color. So gene number one is involved in color production. Try gene number two, no petals. Gene number two, involved with petals, and so on. You could make too many leaves, they could curl up, they could be upside down. Almost anything could happen. But getting rid of the gene tells you what the gene does when it's working. That's right. The RNAi discovery is just amazing. Ten years ago, when we were sitting around talking about what would we really need to understand the human genome, we all said we would need some magic way that you could turn off any gene at will just based on knowing its sequence. And what's happened is this, this discovery by scientists about RNAi has given us exactly that. It turns out that nature already had a way to turn off any gene at will. And now, with RNAi as their key, scientists will have the means to decode every living thing, to identify the genes that allow us to grow, that allow us to move, that give us beauty and color. RNA is a modest little molecule, but what it gives us is the world.